Well, how you doing, everybody? Today, we're gonna talk about the Fantastic Four, or fant four stick as it was stylized in the poster. This is, of course, Fox's attempt at rebooting the franchise that they originally brought to the big screen in 2005, and this time the project is helmed by Josh Trank, who previously rose to fame and fortune with Chronicle. In this version of the Fantastic Four, a group of young scientists create an interdimensional teleporter, and they use it to go to another dimension, eventually. It's not until about halfway through the movie that they finally get to this point. And while they're in this alternate dimension, they get exposed to some weird freaky shit, and when they come back, they have superpowers. Like you do. And then a whole lot of nothing happens until the very end of the movie. Seriously. This is probably the most boring and lifeless superhero movie I have ever seen. Every single performance in this movie is just so... dead. The so-called Fantastic Four are anything but. They're basically a bunch of cardboard cutouts with superpowers. There is almost no emotion or personality in any of these people, and that even seems to be reflected on the movie's website. I mean, look at this. This is the homepage for fantasticfourmovie.com. You can check this yourself. It's just four dimly lit black and white photos of the cast. I mean, w what am I even looking at here? I'm, I'm looking at four random schmucks. That's all I see. And this movie really is a chore to sit through because there's just so little happening. I mean, from the beginning of the movie up till about the halfway point, there's not a whole lot going on until they finally get their superpowers, and then from then to the very end, there's not a whole lot that happens until the big fight at the end with Doctor Doom. And you want to know how they get their superpowers? Well, I'll tell ya. After building this interdimensional teleporter thingy and testing it out with a horrible-looking CGI monkey, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes this was not, the head of their uh, little research institute says, after they do their successful test, we need to get NASA on board because we need help with this. And they apparently are disappointed by this because that means it's probably going to be some NASA astronauts that go to Planet Zero, as it's called, because that's the most creative name they could come up with, I guess. And it won't be them. So, after pounding a shitload of whiskey, they decide, fuck it, we're going to be the first to go there. Really, they get drunk and decide to go dimension hopping. And the really silly thing is Ben Grimm isn't even one of the scientists working on this thing. He's just Reed's old buddy from childhood, and Reed just calls him up in the middle of the damn night and says, Hey Ben, you want to go to another planet? Yeah? All right, be over here in ten minutes. That's it, because what else are they going to do on a Friday night, I guess? And the way they all get their superpowers is really weird, because Sue does not actually go to the other dimension. It's... Reed, Ben, Johnny, and Victor that all go to the other dimension. Victor doesn't make it back, at least not at first, because shit goes wrong. And when the other three come back, there's apparently this big explosion of energy as the teleporter returns, and Sue gets caught up in that, and that's what gives her her powers. Now, this might make sense, except this huge explosion of energy appeared to cover about half the fucking city. So, if she got superpowers, shouldn't half the people in the city also have suddenly become superheroes? This... There's... Uh, I'm missing something here. So being that this is a superhero movie, you would think there would be lots of great action set pieces, right? No. There are two action sequences in the entire movie. And really, by calling it two, I'm being generous. It's more like one and a half, because the first one only lasts about 30 seconds. There is some stupid dialogue in this movie. There's a point towards the end when Victor Von Doom finally becomes the big supervillain towards the very ass end of the movie, and Reed is trying to talk him down like, Victor, no, don't do it! And he says, there is no Victor. Only Zool. Doom, excuse me, Doom. I'm sorry, I was thinking of something else. Yeah, stupid dialogue. And speaking of Doctor Doom, I know we all figured this out from the trailers already, but my god does he look ridiculous. He looks like a mummy covered in radioactive tinfoil. The special effects in this movie are not very good. They're not god-awful by any means, but they're certainly not what you would expect from a summer blockbuster. 
And it's not until the big action sequence at the end of the movie, in the last 15 minutes, that we finally see all four members of the Fantastic Four on screen together. I'm not kidding. Whose idea was it to make a Fantastic Four movie without actually showing the Fantastic Four, apart from the last 15 minutes? And speaking of boneheaded ideas, the origin of Ben Grimm's catchphrase, it's clobberin' time. Oh. I want to find whoever came up with this idea and smack him in the face. Apparently, Ben's abusive older brother used to say that just before he started smacking the shit out of him. What the fuck? Maybe you're taking the dark and gritty reboot thing a little bit too far here, guys? God, why would you do that? And as if we didn't have enough disappointment already, there is no Stan Lee cameo in this movie. Even he stayed far, far away from this piece of shit. There's also no post credit scene. A Marvel movie with no post credit scene, how does that happen? I know it's not produced by Marvel Studios, it's done by Fox, but still, that's kind of the thing with these movies. Why would you not do that? I mean, doing a post credit scene to tease a sequel that will probably never happen. Okay, in hindsight, well, all right, maybe it's better if they left it out then. Overall, this movie is just a giant mess of poor decisions. It's even worse than the 2005 movie. And that just blows my mind because really, that was all this movie had to do. It just had to be better than the 2005 movie. That's it and it couldn't even accomplish that. At least that movie was trying to have fun, unlike this one. Now, really, nothing I'm telling you should come as a surprise, because we all knew going into this that this movie was going to suck. Hell, the day before this movie officially came out, the director, Josh Trank, disowned the movie on Twitter. He has since deleted the tweet, but screenshots are forever. There was a lot of studio meddling, according to multiple sources. Just to give you one example, the movie was originally supposed to have three major action set pieces, but reportedly, just before production began, Fox made him take them all out. Because why would you want to have action in a superhero movie? I mean, that would just be silly. <laughs> And after production was completed, Fox then ordered numerous reshoots, changing various aspects of the film. Like, for example, Victor Von Doom was originally going to be called Victor Domashev or something like that. But thanks to a large public outcry, they went back and changed that. And you can tell which scenes were reshot and which ones weren't, because during the reshoots, Kate Mara had to wear a wig because after production wrapped, she cut her hair. And the wig is not the same color as her hair is for the rest of the movie. The style doesn't even look right. It's just, it's laughably bad. They put no effort into this at all. And while it's easy to point the finger at Fox here, Trank is not entirely blameless either. After all, he did take the job, he directed the movie, so ultimately he has to share some of the responsibility, and there are also reports that he was a major asshole on set when he bothered to show up to the set. And I can certainly believe it was a hostile working environment because you can tell by watching these people on camera that no one was enjoying themselves. There is only doom indeed. Now, if Josh was given the freedom to make the version of the movie he wanted to make, would it have been better? Who knows? I have a hard time imagining it would have been worse, but whether it would have been a huge hit, I guess we'll never know. In the end, the question is not whether or not you should see this movie, because no, you shouldn't. Don't even go see it, ironically. I know some of you are going to do that. Some of you are going to think, well, I'm going to go watch this movie and make fun of it. No, you're not. You're going to go watch this movie and be bored to tears because there's nothing really to make fun of. And some of you might even be swayed by the handful of positive reviews that this movie has received. And yes, they do exist. Don't you believe it. This movie is bad. And the people who made it should feel bad. No, I think the real question is... What does Fox do from here? I mean, they have a sequel planned for 2017, I think, but do they just go ahead and make that anyway and hope for the best? Or do they sit around and reboot the franchise again a few years down the road? I just... 
I don't think either of those plans could work because I have a hard time believing anyone would put any trust in a Fox-produced Fantastic Four movie ever again. So, do they just sit on it and let the time expire when the rights revert back to Marvel? Or do they approach Marvel now and try to just sell it back to them? and try to make some money off of this turd. I don't know what they're gonna do. It'll be interesting to see what strategy they choose. And possibly tragic, we will see. <laughs> but seriously, don't waste your time with this movie. Don't go see it in the theater. Don't wait for the rental. Don't watch it. If it's on cable, change the fucking channel. Just don't. It's not worth your time. And that's all I have to say about the fantastic snore. So until next time, take care.